The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. The most magnificent of all Shakespeare's tragedies is the great love story that involves the two largest empires of their day, Egypt and Rome, and two of the most unforgettable characters in history, Mark Anthony and the enigmatic, mysterious, unbridled feminine sex symbol of all time, Egypt's queen, Cleopatra. Anthony, Forgive my fearful sails. I never thought that you would follow. Cleopatra, you know full well my heart was to your rudder tied, and by its strings you would tow me after you. Now all is lost, and it is you who have betrayed me. Triple tongued deceiver, my heart from now on only wars with you. <laughs> Our mystery drama, The Serpent of the Nile, was adapted from William Shakespeare's Anthony and Cleopatra, especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin, and stars Lois Nettleton and Kevin McCarthy. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Allied Van Lines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. You know, I just thought of something. Yeah, what's that? Well, over 250,000 people have already bought 1976 Buicks. Yeah. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Well, if you got all those people together, they probably disagree on nearly everything. Religion, politics, sports. I mean, people disagree on all that stuff, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And yet all those people, over 250,000 of them, agree on Buicks. I think that's really socially significant, don't you? No. Buick. Dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. The Constitution of the United States of America. A new idea that established the legal framework upon which all our laws are based. Where a free nation created executive, legislative, and judicial systems with checks and balances to ensure freedom. But on Law Day, May 1st, maybe the most important thing to remember about our Constitution is how it begins. It begins, we the people. A public service message on behalf of the American Bar Association and the Bar Associations in your state. Hi, I'm Flip Wilson, TV luminary, whatever that means. And I'm Johnny Bench, baseball superstar, according to the bubblegum cards. And I'm Geraldine Jones. You can call me anything you want, sugar. I love ball players. Did you ever go with one? My boyfriend Killer told me he was a catcher with the Dodger organization. Was he? Well, I went to Dodger Stadium and Killer was catching all right, selling beer and catching nickels and dimes. <laughs> what did you do? I threw him a high inside knuckleball across the lips. <laughs> I teach that taking a lie to Geraldine. <laughs> Geraldine, I heard you're a crusade chairperson for the American Cancer Society. Well, you heard right, honey. My fellow workers made me office chairperson because of my charm and power was a persuasion. Well, you don't have to persuade much to get help in the fight against cancer. No, mostly I make sure all those people who say they gave at the office actually give at the office. If you haven't already given at the office, send a check to your American Cancer Society. We want to wipe out cancer in your lifetime. If you're feeling generous, folks, don't fight the feeling. And that goes for you too, John. <laughs> the death of Julius Caesar, the Roman Empire was ruled by a triumvirate, Caesar's nephew Octavian, a soldier statesman named Lepidus, and the famous Mark Anthony. It was a time of turmoil for Rome, with the triumvirate threatened by Pompey, a former ruler, and it was at this climactic time that Anthony, just as his hero Caesar some years earlier had, met and fell completely under the spell of of the dusky, seductive, immortal queen of Egypt, Cleopatra. While the empire of Rome tottered, Mark Anthony stayed on in Alexandria, bewitched, counting the world well lost for love. Well, Anthony, if it is love, tell me how much... Oh, it's a poor love that has to be counted. Coin by coin. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I'll set a price on me. 
<laughs> See if it adds up to that. Then you will have to dream on a treasure not yet found under heaven. Uh, what now, Ina Barbas? News, my lord, from Rome. Mm, not now. Or, if you must, the gist. No more. No, you must hear it all, Antony. Perhaps your wife, Fulvia, is angry. Or that boy of 20 who shares your throne has issued some imperial command that you must needs obey. Mm, what's that, love? Maybe you are ordered home by him. Ordered? Octavian is a Caesar. And your blood is in homage bound to that last name. And you know when shrill-tongued Fulvia crooks her finger like a schoolboy, you blush and run to obey. The news... A moment, a moment. Now, hear me, Cleopatra. Let Rome fall and drown in the Tiber and the empire tumble after. Here is my space. Kingdoms are clay. The nobleness of life is to do thus. Come, come here. To hold each other thus. When two such as us have met, I bind my promise. I will stand against the world with you, not as Antony, but as us. Two hearts as one, inseparable. <sighs> oh, what a lovely lie. No. Oh, come. Why did you marry Fulvia without loving her? You'll make me seem the fool I am not. Antony is Antony himself. But moved only by Cleopatra. Now, for the love of love and her soft hours, I have no time for state affairs. Later, Ina Barbas. At your command, my lord. Come, my queen. Tonight, you and I shall wander through the streets together, mingling with the people as any two others, just you and I together, as if we were of them, and held no high estate. This was as you wanted it. If my beloved desires... But if that is what you wish, I need a little time to prepare myself. My Lord Antony. Ina Barbus, what now, when I am preparing for the evening's revels? The news from Rome and home which I have fed on. Well, then you digest it. Save it for tomorrow, for I fear it will not please me much. Yes and no. What does that mean? Neither of us knows, my Lord, until you have the reports. Well, speak then. Wars and more wars. Your wife Fulvia's armies took the field against your brother Lucius. And? The war was broken off in friendly agreement. Well, what worse? There must be something to follow. My Lord Antony, your wife is dead. Fulvia? Yes. Fulvia? How? Where? When? What sickness? It is all set down in this missive. Let me see. Oh. Oh, God. I made it thus. In contempt, I put her from me with other pleasures beckoning. Now, as always, when something's lost, we wish it back again a hundredfold. She's good now, being gone. Too late. And what other harms my idleness might hatch. All right, so be it. I must break off from my enchanting queen. It's time to be away. Why so, Mark Antony? Mm, say Fulvia died for love of me. You being absent? Why, if so, then, good my lord, soldiers would kill all our women if to suffer our departure is their death. What? Under a compelling situation, let women die. But let them not die for nothing. Fulvia is beyond your help. Cleopatra, if you leave her, dies upon the instant. I have seen her die a hundred times at only your displeasure. I wish to the gods I'd never seen her. Not only Fulvia's death. But Pompey has seized control of the sea. Octavian is no match for him, a beardless boy. And the public, fickle as always, inclines toward a winner. If I do hope to keep my place under the sun, I must away and do what needs be done. Charmian, have you seen my lord? No, madam. I thought he was with you some time ago. 
We were together, and he was much disposed to mirth. But on the sudden, a Roman thought struck him. A Roman thought? This is his other self. Stern, unrelenting. Then I must be a woman and win him back by my own magic of opposites. See where he is. Who's with him, what he does. Yes, madam. But remember, I did not send you. I will remember. If you find him sad, say I am dancing. If in mirth, report that I have suddenly taken sick. Most beloved mistress and queen. What now? Forgive your loving servant, but... Well, well, go on. Well, since you love him so dearly, is yours the best method to beg his love in return? What would you have me do? Well, give him his way in everything. Cross him in nothing. Oh, silly Charmian. You teach like a fool. That's the way to lose him. Don't tempt him too far, please, little mistress. Oh, but here comes your master, light and gay. But then I am sick and sullen. My dearest Cleopatra... I must have a few words with you alone. Your pardon, sire. Charmian, yes, madam. Help me away. I am faint enough to fall. So sudden and so violent. I, I cannot listen now. My beloved queen. Please, not too near me. What's the matter, my sweet? I know by the look in your eye there is news from your wife. Well, you may go. I only wish she had never let you come. How could I have hoped to have you for my own? When in swearing love for me, Fulvia could claim you false to your Roman gods and name them angry. So, farewell, Antony. When you first wooed and won my love, that was the time for words. <laughs> no thought of leaving then. Eternity was in our lips and our eyes. It still lies there. Or should... Unless the greatest soldier in the world is turned the greatest liar. Cleopatra, listen. Italy is rent by civil war. Pompey is at the gates of Rome, and in my absence has won the people's hearts from Octavian and Lepidus, with whom I share the rule. My country calls for my service, which I have never denied her. And what is more, and which should assure you in your heart of me, my wife is dead. Though age from folly could not give me freedom, it does from childishness. Fulvia, dead? You may read in these letters where and when. And let us quarrel no more. Let me tell you what I intend to do, if you agree. For by the fire that burns eternal in that lamp above the Nile, I go forth from you, my heart's ease, only as your soldier and your servant, making peace or war at your command. Now, lover, turn aside and weep for Fulvia. Then say goodbye to me and say the tears belong to Egypt. So, Lepidus, we and Antony are to meet again. Advices flying before him tell us he soon will return to Rome. Not a moment too soon. We need his presence in the field. If it still represents what once it was. Your pardon, Octavian. Oh, do not believe that I believe the tide of rumor. That once proud Antony now fishes, drinks, and wastes the lamps of evening in oriental revel. Rome is a republic, and the people must be served. How do you think they think of our fellow guardian of the state? I cannot believe rumors. Nor that sudden evils darken all Mark Antony's goodness. Lepidus, you are too indulgent. Let us grant it not amiss to tumble on the gypsy's bed, but to resist the drums which have so long called him from his sport with Cleopatra is to be as young and untried as all who run me down for my lack of years. You are right, Octavian. It is good he will return. And what is better that we persuade him that he is home to stay? <laughs> Charmian? Yes, mistress. Bring me a potion of mandragora or poppy. Why? So I can sleep away the whole gap of time while my Antony is away. You think of him too much. Oh, Charmian. Where do you think he is now? Standing or sitting? Walking or on his horse? Oh, happy horse to bear his weight. Or murmuring... Where is my serpent of the Nile? His name for me. 
How goes it with my brave Mark Antony? What can I say? He is on the seas. His letters will come. So I shall hope. But now I swear, whoever is born on any day I fail to send my messages to my love will die a beggar. Did I, my Charmian, ever love my Caesar so? Brave Caesar, valiant Caesar. Be choked if you can speak of him so fondly. Say brave Antony. Valiant Antony. Oh, forgive me, I, I was just remembering. My salad days. When I was green in judgment, cold in blood. Get me ink and paper. Antony shall have each and every day a special letter. Or I'll unpeople Egypt. <laughs> to Rome, Antony. Thank you, Octavian. Sit. Sit. In this tone of command. Oh, take me not wrong, Antony. Mm -hmm. But I wrote to you in Alexandria without reply. Your message came when I was not there and occupied in some affairs. Is that all? No, Antony. You have broken the oath we swore between us. Softly, Octavian. Now let him speak, Lepidus. How? To lend me arms and aid when I required them. Both you denied. Well, neglected, rather. As nearly as I may, I'll play the penitent. Fulvia, to have me out of Egypt made war is here, and for my ignorance, I ask your pardon. There. That's nobly spoken me, Octavian. I would hope. And further hope to put aside all misunderstanding from now on. Then let me hasten to suggest the means. How? Octavian has a sister on his mother's side, Octavia. Since you are now a widower... To hold you brothers, Antony, why not take Octavia for your wife? Let me have your hand, Octavian. And from this hour, let us rule together, true brothers. Here is my hand. A sister, I bequeath you. Let her live to join our kingdoms and our hearts. Then, happily, amen. Charmian, give me some music. And moody food for me that trades in love. Cleopatra, my queen, be not so. It is not the end. Or the beginning. Only that dread snake's coil that shuffles in between. Oh, why is there no word of him? Oh, here comes a messenger now. If his news be bad, he shall be whipped with wire and stewed in brine. Oh, the gods help me. Admit him, and may the gods help him. If he brings me good news, then he may have half my kingdom. If not, then may all Egypt melt into the Nile and all my people with him. A soldier and a conqueror who is a lamb within the arms of one woman. A woman who is a tiger burning bright, but melts before the presence of the man she loves. Two empires in their hands rocked to and fro by the tempestuous love and their realization of their trusts. Where do they go from here? I shall return shortly with Act Two. Moving on with the Allied spirit Going to a brand new town You're leaving the past miles behind you With Allied band lines you're home We take a special pride in our work. We treat every move as if it were our first, even though we move more families every year than anybody else. That's because we know there's a little bit of you and your family in everything we move. It's that kind of pride that's made us the world's number one mover. We call it the Allied Spirit. And when it moves you, you know you're going home. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. Nightline, you're on the air. About the caller who talks to her plants? Yes. She should plant her garden at the library. Uh huh. Learning Swahili will not help her grow an African violet. That's good advice. And the caller who's looking for a new job? Oh, yeah. She should go to the library for job information. The library. She should have never lost her old one. Well, I agree. You just yeah. don't take off work for Robert Redford's birthday. No. I mean, that isn't a national holiday. You're right. The library could have told her that. Absolutely. And finally, the caller who botched up his vacation? Oh, yes. Always plan a trip at the library first. That was a shame. I mean, he should have been suspicious of any travel ad that reads eight days and only four nights. Oh, you're right, yes. You know, the yes. library has some great new services for everyone, from general information and referral to concerts and puppet shows. Well, thank you for calling, Nightline. No, I have a problem. Oh. You see, I'm at the library right now. At 3 a.m.? Well, they said it was closing time, but I started uh-huh. tracing my family tree, and I forgot oh. to look at the clock. The library. Oh, Come see what's new, besides books. If there's a locksmith listening, uh-huh. I'd really sure. appreciate it. We'll see what we can do. A public service message from the American Library Association. Cleopatra waits in Alexandria, eager for and yet afraid of the news the messenger brings of her Antony. Here's the messenger from Rome, Your Majesty. Antony is dead. If you say so, villain, you kill your mistress. But if you tell me he is well and free, there is gold and my hand to kiss. This blue-veined hand that kings have taken and trembling kissed. First, uh, madam, he is well. Oh! And here is gold and gold and more gold. But if that isn't true, I'll have each gold coin melted and poured molten down your lying throat. Uh, good madam, uh, hear me. He, he is well. Well said. And Octavian and he are greater friends than ever. You'll have a fortune from me. But yet... I do not like, but yet. Speak out, man. All the good and bad together... You say he's friends with Octavian. You say he's free. I, I did not say free, madam. You said he was not a slave. Well, not slave to him, but uh, to his sister, Octavia. Oh. What does that mean? It, it means that he is married to Octavia. May the pestilence strike you down as I do. Uh, 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 patience, madam. I'll have your eyes off. Unhair your head. Uh, unless you say it is not so... And you may have a province, half my kingdom. My royal queen, I would that I could, but he is married. Rogue! You have lived too long. Madam, put aside the dagger. The man is innocent, majesty. Some innocents are caught when lightning strikes. Come here, sir. Though it be honest, it is never good to bring bad news. I, I tried to do my duty. And so you have. You say he's married... Come, come, I cannot hate you more than I do if you say yes again. He is married. The gods confound you. Uh, To Octavia? Yes. The merchandise you have brought me is too dear for me. Get out, out of my sight. Out before I have you boiled in oil. Your majesty, patience. In praising Antony, Charmian, I have many times dispraised Octavian. Many times. I am bitterly paid for it now. Go to the fellow, Charmian. Ask about Octavia, her looks, her age, what she is like. And let him not leave out the color of her hair. And wait, how tall she is. Pity me, Charmian. And first, lead me to my chamber where a queen can weep alone. Exchanged. Now we may talk before we fight. For Antony, Lepidus, and myself, brave Pompey, we will hope that words may serve us better than conflict. Too much of youth would perish if we came to battle. Mm, I cannot deny that truth. Then speak to us openly of how you treat our offers tendered to you. That I shall have Sicily and Sardinia, and in return we'll rid the sea of pirates and send certain measures of wheat to Rome? That's our offer. Does it not seem fair? I might have hesitated had not Antony returned, but now 
I'm disposed to take your offer. Then well met here. Let us have the agreements drawn up and signed so that I may feast you aboard my galley. Your the feast should be mine. Oh, <laughs> mark you. I shall yet enjoy your fine Egyptian cookery. <laughs> I have heard that Julius grew fat with feasting there. You hear a good deal. Mm, I have my informant. And so have I. I trust your information is as sound as mine. Uh, why, if it's gossip, my Lord Pompey, I'm your man. And allow my captain and his companions to withdraw and write the terms of the treaty. Good idea, Inobarbus. Well spoken. Antony, Lepidus, shall we go apart for this purpose? Uh, I know you now. How are you, soldier? Well, I hadn't thought of you as politician, Inobarbus. Say rather, peacemaker. My Captain Antony is sensitive in some areas. Ah, the Egyptian. <laughs> but I thought that past. Is he not married now to Octavia? Yes. Well, that he is firmly knit to her brother Octavian. Cleopatra is only a memory. I will be blunt, sir, for many reasons. I am a soldier and must face the odds. I doubt that knot can hold. Oh, for what reason? Mark Antony will be off to his Egyptian dish again. And I would be the last to blame him. And I would hazard a guess this time will she let him go so easily. It's not only that, Octavia. Many things are excusable and trifles do not anger me. But your brother, without consulting me, has opened war with Pompey, made his will and read it to the public, speaking in derogation of me. I've given him my best. And gotten in return nothing more than a smile that does not go behind the teeth. My lord, don't believe all rumors. For my sake, who stand between you, praying for you and loving you both. If you must believe, don't take it so to heart. Gentle Octavia, you may have to make a choice. If I lose my honor, I lose myself. But if you will be a go-between, then you must make it now. For I am making preparation for such a war as shall destroy your brother. No. Give me this chance to reconcile you. Go to him if you will. And when you decide where the fault lies, make your choice. For I tell you, our faults can never be so equal that your love can equally move with them. You must choose your own company and go where your heart has a mind to. <laughs> Lepidus is the latest news of Antony. In Alexandria, where he has returned, he has had in the marketplace himself and Cleopatra enthroned in chairs of gold. In the public eye. In a common show place. That robe be so informed. Ah, the people know it. The whole world, I think. Except my poor sister, who has just returned. Ah, here she comes. Hail, brother. And my lord Lepidus. All hail, fair Octavia. That I should ever have to call you castaway. You have not called me so, nor have you cause. My good Lord Mark Antony, hearing you prepared for war, told me, and I begged his pardon to return. Which I am sure he granted easily, since you stood between his lust and him. Do not be unfair to him, Octavian, till I make my plea. Unfair? Where is your good Lord now? Why, in Athens? No, my sister... Cleopatra has crooked her finger again, and he has run back to her in Egypt. Oh, no. Not only that, dear madam, but he has raised an army from Libya, Thrace, Arabia, Mede, Laconia, and countless other kings to move against us. Oh, God. How wretched I am to have my heart torn in two between the ones I love the best. Your letters held us back till we were sure that you were wronged and ourselves in danger. You are abused beyond all belief. And to do you justice, the high gods will make of us their ministers. Welcome to Rome, madam. Every Roman heart welcomes you. Save only the adulterous Antony, on whom we'll have full revenge for you and the Republic. Inabarbus, why do you object to my presence at the camp? I think only of Antony. If you thought upon my lord alone, you would not be here to take from his heart, take from his brain. He is already traduced in Rome. Where it is said that Cleopatra and her maids manage this war. Sink Rome. And may the tongues of those who speak against us rot to the roots. I bear a charge in this war. As leader of my kingdom, though I am not a man, I will not be left behind. There now, I'll say no more. Here comes the emperor. 
How in the gods could Octavian have cut the Ionian Sea so fast, eh, Anabarbus? Have you heard of this, my sweet? Quickness is never more admired than by the negligent. A good rebuke, my love. So, I will take your advice and meet him by sea. Why? Because he dares us to it. So have you dared him to single combat. What does not suit his advantage, he shakes off, as you should. I have 60 ships to help by sea. But our ships are poorly manned by muleteers, reapers, anything we could impress for crews. We'll fight by sea. You throw away the advantage we have by land. Don't risk your battle-tested troops to rotten planks and foreign shells. We'll fight at sea, and then if we fail, we can do it by land. Lepidus? Yes, Octavian. Remember, do not strike by land. Hold your positions and do not provoke battle till we have done at sea. You know our plan? Our fortune lies upon this jump. Octavian's fortune and Rome's, but also Cleopatra's and Mark Antony's. For the colossal blunder of committing himself to a sea battle he cannot win instead of a land war that he could spells the end for Anthony and Cleopatra. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. If you went into a Buick dealer's between now and April 30th, do you know what would happen? Well, if you ordered one of four cars with a list of specially selected options, you'd get a vinyl top at no extra charge. Like that Skylark over in the corner? Order one with sport mirrors, a rally tilt steering wheel, body side stripes and vinyl buckets, and Buick pops for the top. To find out about other cars, talk to your Buick dealer. He knows all that stuff. Buick, dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. Hi, this is Tony Marvin for the National Leukemia Association. Please remember this name, Project Research. Join me and get on a winning team, because it's only through research that a breakthrough can be made. Throw your knockout punch against leukemia. Send your tax-deductible donation today to Project Research, care of the National Leukemia Association, Box 3039, Garden City, New York. Our thanks to you for Project Research. You know, traditionally, credit has been a man's realm. But today, as more women become part of the workforce, they are realizing the need to establish their own credit identity. And this is Gene King of the Council of Better Business Bureaus with a few tips for women who wish to establish a credit rating. First of all, open a checking and or savings account in your own name, even if you already have a joint account with your husband. Apply for and use at least two credit cards. Open a charge account in your own name at a local store and establish a line of credit at your bank. According to the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, applicants for credit must be judged on their own merits. And if you feel you've been unjustly denied credit, talk to the credit agency or the lending institution and you just go there and find out why. And if you're not satisfied with their explanation, contact the regional office of the Federal Trade Commission. the shore with the rear guard of the once great land army that Anthony might have led in a triumphant march on Rome, Eno Barbus watches in dismay as his worst fears are more than realized. For as the two great armadas meet in action, suddenly the Egyptian fleet turns in flight and abandons Anthony and his pitifully few and overcrowded ships to the overwhelming might of the enemy. Oh, gods, I can look at it no longer. All 60 of the Egyptian ships turned rudder and in flight. What happened, messenger? Cleopatra, in the midst of the fight, before the tide of battle was yet known, had her admiral hoist her sails and take flight. I saw that. But the rest... When once the queen's ship turned, the others followed. Then, Antony, like a doting mallard, claps on his sea wings to follow. Breaking off action at the height of battle for <laughs> shame. Manhood and honor violated. Six kings and their legions are already left to yield to Octavia. As well they might. But I'll still follow the cause of wounded Antony. Though reason sits with the wind against it. Sweet Antony, forgive my fearful sails. I little thought you would have followed. Egypt, you know full well my heart was to your rudder tied. 
and by its strings would you tow me after you. Now all is lost, and it is you who have betrayed me, sold me to this novice, triple-tongued deceiver. My heart from now on only wars with you, and when I am revenged upon your charm, then all is over. Oh, Charmian, all is over. I have lost my love. Antony still lives. But Cleopatra does not. No longer in his heart. And in his shame and rage, his may be the hand that slays me rather than Octavian's conquering sword. For all is gone. My country. My hope. My love. Oh, help me. Charmian, help me. The Lord would never do you hurt. And if he did, he never would forgive himself. I must flee, Charmian. But where? The tomb. The tomb? The monument and sepulcher that long ago was built to house you on your royal journey out of this world. Sad is the day that it must come so soon. You're right. I'll go to the monument this minute, for you will join me. But first, go to my... Go to him and tell him I have slain myself. Say that the last word I spoke was Antony. I will, Your Majesty. And Charmian? Yes, my queen. Remember every word so you can tell me how he takes my death. My captain, the wind is heavy. I wish my heart were not. I made these wars for Egypt and the queen whose heart I thought I had, for she had mine. But she cut cards with Octavian and false played all my glory into an enemy's triumph. No, no, Ina Barbus, no, it's not worth tears. All that is left me is to end myself. My Lord Antony! What, her serving woman? Away, mistress. Your vile queen has robbed me of my sword. No, no, my lord. My mistress loved you, and all her fortunes were wrapped up in you. Away, I said away. She's betrayed me and shall die for it. Death can be bought only once, and already by her own hand she has paid for it. The last she said was, Antony, most noble Antony. Dead. Dead. Cleopatra dead. <laughs> oh. On our main of harvest. The long day's task is done, and I must sleep. Leave us, mistress, and count the fact that you take your life with you a richer reward than you deserve. Take you, Cleopatra, and weep for my pardon. So it must be, for all life is torture. Since the torch is out, why lay it down and look for rest? I come, my queen. Oh, stay for me. And hand in hand, where souls walk on some flower-strewn strand, we'll count the world well lost. Ina Barbus. What do you want of me, Antony? I've lived in such dishonor these last hours that the gods detest my baseness. I, that with my sword quartered the world and owned the seas, condemn myself for lacking even the courage of a woman. My mind less noble than hers, who has already said by her death to Octavian, you are no conqueror, I am the conqueror of myself. Now you are sworn... As my lieutenant, Ina Barbus... Don't ask that me. when the time has come that I have failed my command and my honor... No, Antony, I beg you. Upon my command, you will then kill me. Draw your sword. The time is here. My captain, pardon me, and do not you ask me... You won't wound me. It is Octavian you defeat. With a wound, I must be cured. I command you, draw your sword. Then turn your back on me. I cannot look you in the face. So, there. My sword is drawn. My captain and my emperor, before I strike this bloody stroke, farewell. Farewell, old friend and comrade. Farewell, great chief. Oh, oh. It works. Oh, no. Falling on your own sword. So did I escape the sorrow of Antony's death. 
three times as noble as I. Oh, you teach me, valiant Inabarbus, what I should have done and you could not. My queen and you, by your brave instruction, have taught me well. Now I will be a bridegroom in my death and run to it as to a lover's bed. Inabarbus, your master dies your pupil, as I learned from... Oh! Ah! I have done the work ill. Guard! Guard! Oh! Lord Antony! Lord Antony! What has happened? I pray you, make an end of what I have begun. What, my lord? Have you a sword? Then draw it and strike me till I die. Oh, most absolute lord, I cannot. My mistress, Cleopatra, sent me to you. Cleopatra sent you when? Oh, this moment, lord. Who are you? Oh, yes, Diomed. The messenger who always passed between us. Cleopatra, where is she? Who in her tomb? But not dead. She is locked within the monument because she feared you suspected her of being in league with Octavian. And for that reason, that in your rage you would kill her. And so I would have. Well, of a sudden, the queen realized that her death might in turn cause yours and sent me post-haste to bring you the truth. And now I've arrived too late. Too late. Too late. Good Diomed. Save only to say a last farewell. Call my guard and have them bear me to the monument and my love. Gently, gently put him down. Oh, Anthony. Peace, love. Now leave us or save you, Charmian. Stand aside a little. Yes, Your yes, Majesty. Yes, Your Majesty. Do not mourn me. It is not Octavian's valor that's defeated me, but Antony's, which has triumphed over itself. And so it should be that none but Antony should conquer Antony. Yeah, I'm dying, Egypt. Dying. Only here I will hold off grim death a little while till I can lay the last. Of a thousand kisses on your lips. And welcome. Die where you have lived. If my lips only had the breath of life, I'd kiss and kiss and kiss again till I'd worn them out. Spare lament. Waste no sorrow at the miserable state in which I die. Remember me, remember me in better fortune when I lived the greatest prince of the world and that now I, I do not basely die. I am a Roman by a Roman valiantly vanquished. My spirit is going. I can no more, my queen. In your arms, I am dying. Egypt... Noblest of men. How can you die? Have you no care or thought of me? How can I live in this dull world without your sun to make it bright? No. Oh, oh look. Charmian. The crown of the earth has melted. The garland of war is withered. And the soldier's sword is fallen. Oh, <laughs> the lamp is spent. <laughs> Royal it's Egypt. Out. Empress. <laughs> peace, peace. Peace, girl. We'll bury him. And then I'll do what's brave. And make death proud to take me too. His spirit is now cold. I have no friend but resolution at the briefest end. So, Charmian, have you 
have you brought that dread serpent of the Nile? Hidden in this basket of figs, so that I could smuggle it past the Roman guard that holds you prisoner here. Have a care with that pretty worm. He pains not, but his bite is death. Hand him to me. Your Majesty. Hush. Now, give me my robe. Put on my crown. I have immortal longings in me. I seem to hear Antony call. I see him rouse himself to praise my noble act. Husband, I come. My courage will prove title to that name. I am fire and air. My other elements I leave to baser life. So, have you done? My queen is all attired. Come then. Take the last warmth of my lips. Farewell, kind Charmian. Now, be tender, asp. With your sharp fangs, this intricate knot of life, untie. Poor venomous fool. Be angry and be quick. Dissolve thick clouds and rain that I may say the gods themselves are weeping. Hush. Hush. Do you not see the baby at my breast that suckles the nurse to sleep? As sweet as balm, as soft as air, as gentle. Oh, Antony, Antony, I am come home. Entering the tomb later, gazing on her says, she looks like sleep. She shall be buried with her Anthony. No grave on earth shall hold in it a pair so famous. And so the curtain falls. Well, your uh, big TV debate will be on the air in 30 seconds, Senator. I'm Hank Fine. Don't worry, sir. You're the incumbent, and you'll eat him up. Right. Uh, oh, there's your opponent now. 20 seconds, gentlemen. Hank, what's my opponent carrying under his arm there? Uh, it's, a, it's a Time magazine. Oh, no. It's probably this week's I haven't even read it. Easy, <gasps> sir. Hank, he'll be on top of everything. World affairs, law, economics, the movie reviews. I'll sound like a dodo out there. Ten seconds, He'll please. be bright. He'll be witty. and Senator, I'll be... Senator, oh, don't oh. put your thumb in your mouth. Unless... Unless he only had time to look at Time Magazine's cover. Oh, no. Uh, stand by, please. Hank, I don't even know who's on Time's cover this week. Sir. Can you see who's on Time's cover? Oh, I can't. What if they ask me who's on Time's yeah. cover? What am I going to And now, the candidate's debate. On the left, we have the incumbent, Senator Ethel Ab- Ethel Merman. No, she was on the cover of something else. A uh, Senator... Uh, Alice Cooper or Abe Dean? A senator, all we want. I know what you want. Is it a picture of a shark? Just the name. The shark didn't have a name. Give me a hint. Rover Senator Blackie. Time makes everything more interesting. Including you. This completes our week's cycle of Shakespearean tragedies. I hope you've enjoyed them. He was a master storyteller as well as a great poet. William Shakespeare is someone entitled to the profoundest respect. But he also has the right to be listened to with understanding and enjoyment. All liberties taken with the original scripts were merely to illuminate the characters and clarify the plots. After all, this week was the 412th anniversary of his birthday. And manners, language, and the way of the world have changed quite a bit. But beneath the veneer, men and women haven't. I hope Mr. William Shakespeare has had full chance to make himself understood. Our cast included Kevin McCarthy, Lois Nettleton, Carol Titel, Robert Dryden, Russell Horton, and Paul Hecht. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. 
What about the police? Yeah, the police. They said they didn't know what I was talking about. Well? Frank, that's what's funny. I'm not allowed to talk to the cashier, and nobody else in the bank, including the security guard, would, would even speak to me. And the police... They just smiled and told me to run along. What goes on out there? It's a tight little community, that's what goes on. And no hard-nosed reporter's going to loosen it up. I don't believe it. I'll find somebody who'll spill the beans. Yeah, in your face. Why do you keep saying things like that? Because, dummy, if you become an annoyance to the three elders who run the place, you just might join those two hold-up guys your heart bleeds for. You're scared. Aren't you, Frank? For your sake. Yeah. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Time Magazine. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.